<laughs> what are you gonna do, Kevin? Oh, uh, yeah. So as you can see, you know, you can see what the initial reaction is gonna be to people he doesn't know. And it's no great surprise. Again, you should know a little bit about the breed you're getting involved in. That's a baby Caucasian of Charka. Cute, but he's a six month old Caucasian of Charka, you know? Hey guys, as here at Shield Canine, today I am going to talk to you about the three things that I look for when selecting a dog to rescue. This is something that I don't think a lot of people do. This is why a lot of people fail at rescue because they don't make informed decisions. They don't take these things into account when they bring a dog into their life. And oftentimes it just ends up being an incompatible situation and the dog loses and the people lose. Everybody basically gets let down by that situation. So let's talk about the three most important things to take into consideration when you are bringing a new dog into your life, especially one that's already grown. Number one, and I don't think I should have to say this, but I do have to say this because I don't think a lot of people take this into consideration. Temperament, it's so important. For the purposes of this discussion, temperament is a general description of all the individual character traits and behavior traits that make up the individual that is the dog that you are looking at or the dog that you are taking into your home. Temperament encompasses things like sociability, the dog's behavior around resources, the dog's reaction towards new environmental and social stimulation. All these things are very important to take into consideration. A lot of people, here's the mistake a lot of people make, they think of temperament as something that you can change. Now, with very good training, you can impact temperament to some degree, but what you have to understand is temperament. The baseline traits that make up an individual dog are genetic. So if you are going to the shelter and you see a dog that's offering fear aggressive behaviors, you see a dog that's showing antisocial behavior, and you think, oh, no problem, I'll take him, I'll love him, and now all of a sudden he's gonna change, in many cases, you're gonna end up being extremely disappointed and it's not going to work out, right? You need to go in with your eyes wide open as to what you're looking at. Oftentimes, unfortunately, rescues and shelters will be a little bit unscrupulous. You know, he's nervous with men because we think a man may have beaten him. He doesn't like kids because we you, we think the neighborhood kids probably tortured him before he got to us. So you can see these stories, they're a dime a dozen, right? And in the vast majority of cases, they're completely untrue. It's just the baseline genetic temperament of that dog. He's fearful. He's nervous. He struggles with new social interactions. And if you don't know how to properly manage that and you don't have the right training on the dog, it's gonna make living with him extremely difficult and challenging both for the dog and for you. So you need to go into the rescue and, and shelter situation with your eyes wide open that temperament is genetic and you need to select the temperament that you are willing to deal with, that you are willing to work with, and that's going to be most conducive to your lifestyle. So whether you have small children, whether you're a very social person, whether you live in the city, live in the country, whether you want the dog to to actually be able to do a job to some degree, whether it's guarding your property, so on and so forth. These are all things to take into consideration. Hey guys, I just wanted to quickly interrupt this video to mention something. We have now created an online training bundle. This is a bundle of online courses geared specifically for how to bring a rescue dog into your home, how to select a rescue dog, how to bring it into your home, how to acclimate it to your lifestyle, and how to fully train and rehabilitate that dog. Rescue dogs, as you may or may not know, can come with a variety of issues ranging from behavioral to just obedience related. This bundle is going to include everything you could possibly ever need to know in order to properly train your rescue dog from the ground up, from day one with you on to forever, and how to become the dog of your dreams. So guys, if you want to find out more about that bundle, check out the link below. So you guys can see the behavior of this dog, right? He's unsure about me, you know, he's just, oh, he's more what I would call aloof, right? Like you're not seeing a ton of social interest. Um, you're seeing some stress behaviors, but you're not seeing too many, right? Like there's no reaction to any kind of uh, uh, like invitation to interact with me. Um, he's just kind of looking at me. <laughs> so temperament is not something to be neglected. How would I evaluate temperament? So number one, when I'm walking up and down the kennel aisle, because a lot of shelters and rescues, they have kennels, you can walk and you can see the dogs. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for behavior behind the fence. Is the dog excited against the fence? Is the dog acting social against the fence? Or is the dog showing avoidant antisocial behaviors? You know, growling, lunging, you know, snarling, or is he barking excitedly? Is he wagging his tail? That's gonna tell me a little bit about the temperament. Now, 
Keep in mind, behind fences, a lot of dogs can develop a barrier frustration, which to the uneducated eye may appear to be aggression, but it is a piece of the puzzle to see the temperament of the dog in an environment that he's comfortable in, an environment that he's been in for a little bit at least. Obviously, if I have a dog that's up against the fence wagging his tail and turning his head sideways so I can pet him, I know, ah, he's pretty social. He doesn't know me and he's showing me this behavior. Versus I see that dog, whoa, 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 whoa. His natural predisposition to someone he doesn't know is to actually show some defensive aggression. All right, okay, that's something to keep in mind. And obviously the individual breed is going to inform the individual temperament, right? There are a lot of breeds that, that once they get to know you, they're very sweet with you, but they're not that sweet with people they don't know. Well, here's the thing. If you are a very social person and you buy a dog who has some antisocial tendencies, yeah, he's probably gonna love you after a couple weeks and be just fine with you and your family, but he might not love all the people that come to visit you. He might not, not love your family members that come to visit you. Walking him, especially if you don't have the right training with him, walking him out in public might be a little bit of a fun experience for you because he's gonna be lunging and barking at people he doesn't know or other dogs he doesn't know. So temperament, very important to look at. The other thing that I like to do to evaluate temperament is, and, and most rescues and, and shelters will allow you to do this, and if they don't, run in the other direction, take the dog out in the room, take him for a walk on the leash, you know, have him in a room with you and just kind of see what the behavior like. Is he flinchy? Is he shy? Is he forward? Is he social? Is he engaging? I'm not saying that you shouldn't take a dog that has antisocial, fearful tendencies into your home. Just understand that what you're taking is a higher level of challenge and what behaviors that are likely going to come along with that temperament are things that you need to be prepared for and you need to know what to do with. And if you aren't prepared for them, you're going to be in for a little bit of a rough ride, okay? How does he behave around food? Very important, you know, is he resource guarding? Does he have resource guarding behaviors? Is he very comfortable in the presence of resources and, and, and people in close proximity? These are all things to know. How does he behave around other dogs? Do you have other dogs in your home? Well, it's kind of important to see what the baseline behavior is around other dogs. The next thing, energy level. Just like different people have different energy levels. You have the hard chargers. You have the dogs that like to go, 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 go. And then you have the dogs that are a little bit more relaxed. Are you somebody that likes to go for runs every day? Are you somebody that's super active outdoors all the time? Do you have a big country property where a dog can run around and, and do a lot? Or, you know, maybe you're involved in some type of formal dog sports or something like that. Places where the dog has an outlet for all that energy. Maybe you're a low energy person. Maybe you don't really leave the house a lot. Maybe you're not in the best physical shape and you don't like to move that much. Getting a high energy dog when you're a low energy person it's probably gonna be pretty exhausting for you and pretty frustrating for the dog. So these are things that you need to keep in mind when you're selecting a dog. The first rescue dog I ever got, the first dog I ever got that was all mine, that belonged to me, was actually from the Humane Society. And what I did was I said, you know, I'm not sure about this whole dog lifestyle thing. I don't know if it's for me. I went and I adopted a nine-year-old German Shepherd and she was still actually thinking back. She had a medium energy level, right? She wasn't a low energy dog, but she wasn't super high energy, hyper intense dog either. She was nine years old. So I said, number one, I'm not signing up for a long contract here. I know that, you know, realistically, the dog's probably not going to live past 12 years of age. And then number two, I'm not signing up for this dog at the highest level of energy. This dog is older, so more mature. So she's lower energy. And then I also checked her temperament the way I described it. Everything was what we thought it was going to be. So energy level is really important. The, the last thing is size. I think a lot of people make the mistake of assuming a big dog needs a big property and a small dog can live anywhere. That's not true. It's actually more about the energy level. You could live in a small apartment with a great day because most of them tend to be pretty chill dogs that like just lying on the floor around you all the time. You can live in a small apartment with a Mastiff. Mastiffs don't generally like to move around a lot. They're just hanging out. They're just lying around all day. Jack Russell Terrier, for instance, is he going to be fine just living in a small apartment, not doing anything? Probably not. He's a dog that needs to run. It's not that you need to live in a bigger spot. Listen, I lived in a townhouse in the suburbs for the longest time with two Belgian Malwas, but I was doing dog sport. I went on structured walks with them every day. The size of your living situation isn't as important as understanding what it is that you're looking for in the dog. So the size of the dog has importance, right? It obviously has importance. What kind of car do you drive? I drive a Honda Civic and I have a, a, a Great Dane. Oof, I don't know. Is that going to work? You have to take these things into consideration. The three things just to go over, guy. Temperament of the dog, the most important thing energy level of the dog, the second most important thing, and then the last, the size of the dog, because you have to pick a size and shape of dog that is conducive to your lifestyle, your wants, your needs, and what you're looking for. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like, subscribe, comment below. If you agree, if you disagree, let me know. 
Check out our online training out, shieldk9online.com. If you want some of the cool training here you see us using in all our training videos, check that out, shieldk9.ca. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.